Hello, and this is Sunny. Welcome back. Today I will talk about three routing topics: static routing, dynamic routing, and routing matrix. What's the static routing? In networking, static routing refers to the practice of manually configuring a router to forward data packets to specific destination through predetermined paths. Static routing is generally used in small networks where there's limited number of devices and the network is relatively simple. Static routing is also useful in situations where network security is a concern, as it allows an administrator to have more control over the path that data packets take. There's a few benefits to using static routing in a network. One, simplicity. Static routing is easy to set up and maintain, especially in a small networks with a limited number of devices. Two, security, because static routing allows the administrator to have more control, it can be more secure than dynamic routing. Three, predictability, with a static routing, the path. That the data packets take is predetermined, which can make it easier to troubleshoot. Four reliability. Static routing can be more reliable than dynamic routing, as it does not rely on algorithms that may fail or be disrupted. Five performance. In some cases, static routing can be more efficient than dynamic routing, as it does not require the overhead of constantly calculating and updating routes. It's important to note static routing may not be the best choice for all networks, and its suitability will depend on the specific needs and requirements of the network. Dynamic routing. Dynamic routing refers to the practice of using algorithms to automatically determine the best path for the data packets to take, based on the real-time network conditions. Routers use dynamic routing protocols to communicate with each other and exchange information about available routes and network conditions. Dynamic routing allows routers to automatically adapt to changes in the network, such as the failure of network link or the addition of a new router. This makes more flexible and resilient than static routing. However, dynamic routing can be more complex to set up and maintain than static routing. As it requires the use of routing protocols and may involve more overhead, it may also be less secure, as it allows devices to automatically discover and use new routes, which could potentially be exploited by hackers. Now let's talk about routing matrix. Routing matrices are values used by routers and other networking devices to determine the best path to a given destination. Some common routing matrices include hop count, the number of routers that a package passes through to reach its destination, bandwidth or cost, the high bandwidth. Means lower cost. Traffic, the amount of traffic currently being transmitted over a link. Delay or latency, 
It means the amount of time it takes for a packet to travel from its source to its destination. MTU, the maximum transmission unit, the maximum size of a single packet that can be transmitted. Reliability, it means the likelihood of a given link will fail or experience errors. Different gateway protocols use different routing matrix to calculate the best path. For example, distance vector type of routing protocols such as RIP version 1, RIP version 2, and RGRP use the number of hop count to get the best path while link state type routing protocols such as OSPF and ISIS use many other routing matrix. EIGRP uses both distance vector and link state vector. In the following lessons, we will look at different types of interior gateway protocol IGPs based on the different routing matrix. I hope this video is helpful. Thank you very much and see you next time.